So as there have been a lot of changes in the handbook over the last year, we felt it was a good idea to take some time to talk about the new handbook, the changes and in your calling. And this changed our calling. And so kind of good just to, to refresh on that. Yeah. So the purpose behind this revision is to help every member serve in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in a more Christ-like way. And they said they, that we've tried to make this book more accessible to every member of the church, whether you're a new member or a longtime member, whether they live in the United States or the most far-flung places on the planet. That's one of the really exciting things that we're seeing in the church now is this just global church that we are becoming and everyone involved in this work. Yeah, like Sister Kerry was sharing. Yeah, well, folks from Ghana. Yeah, and going to Ghana. Yeah. So the handbook is completely updated. I think it's been a year they've taken to get this done, and it is now complete and available online to anybody. It's actually I don't know that you even need a church account to see it, but you know, it used to be the handbook was the book that the bishop had in his office. And now we have, yeah. have two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it's one, and it's all available um, online. So the general handbook is what they call a living, breathing, digital document. Um, the reason they're calling it that way now is it's going to be updated probably <clears> every <throat> three or four months. Um, so even in anything relation to our callings, always look out for that because any change that comes, it will be there. Um, they won't be the same physical handbook that's the same for year after year. This is now just a changeable document as the need arises. One of the things we read that said the, the, the first presidency and the quorum of the 12 are not shy about updating the handbook. Yeah. So there's gonna be lots of changes. So the handbook reflects the desires, the input and the direction from the people we sustain as prophets, seers and revelators. And that's just such, a, such an important part of the, the changes in the handbook. You know, th this isn't just change of policy or good ideas or thoughts you might want to think about. This is what the prophet and the Quorum of the Twelve really under inspiration feel is important for us to, to be doing. So that's why we wanted to talk about it a little bit today. Yeah. And it really is a lot of this, I feel, through Revelation. And as the church continues to grow, it's more, more inclusive to the different areas of the world that we're growing to. Right ongoing restoration yeah exactly yeah. so the first one we wanted to talk about it always has a little number so when you use the if you go on to the you can find this either on um in the library app on your phone yeah or on the church website under um so, gospel media gospel gospel media topics okay forget the look but every section has a little number so yeah um, there's a mixture of people tonight. So Wall Temple and Family History Consultants, this is what it says under this, but it's important that we all understand each other's role. Yep. Section so, 25 is all about Temple and Family History. Yeah. So 25.2.4 is, is for consultants. So the Ward Temple and Family History Consultants serve under the direction of the Ward Temple and Family History Leader or the members of the, of the Elders Quorum Presidency who fills this role if their leader hasn't been called. So the responsibilities are to help members experience the blessings of discovering their ancestors and performing temple ordinances on their behalf. To help members prepare to receive temple ordinances and make temple covenants. Participate in temple and family history coordination meetings. And serve in local family history centers when assigned. So these are just some of the, I guess, highlights. There's a lot more stuff in in the sections, we really would encourage everybody to become familiar with the sections that yeah, are the whole section. pertain to them. Actually, the, yeah, the whole section 25, because yeah. it gives, it, it's, it used to be, as some have been doing it for a long time, no. <clears throat> you had to be a genealogist. And you, yeah, and it was, you were kind of like an island. Yeah. You were just like, okay, you're called, no, bye. Yeah. But now we've got real good information and guidance there. And you'll notice that the ones that are up here, obviously, again, there are more in the actual handbook, but a key word that you'll see under the consultant section is the word help. The consultant is to be a helper um, and to help move the work. Right. That's why we don't have to be genealogists anymore. Right. They don't We're need helpers. genealogists. We need helpers. Yeah. 
So these experiences are especially important for those learning the gospel, new and returning members, and those preparing to receive or recommend for proxy baptisms and confirmations. Right. So these are the people we should be helping the most as consultants. Yep, especially new, new people to the church. Um, as we have been in the in the in the church and get know the importance to us in the power in the temple, um, encouraging those to get there too is is great help. So twenty five point two point three. Kind of going backwards. <laughs> World Temple and Family History Leader. So the pro the the. Um, primary responsibility is to support the elders quorum presidency and relief society presidency and their temple and family history responsibilities to coordinate temple and family history efforts with organization leaders including mm -hmm. leaders to lead the ward tnfh coordination meetings to coordinate temple and family history consultants efforts to help members with temple and family history work and to work with the ward mission leader and missionaries to help those learning the gospel, new members and returning members engage in temple film ministry work. And that's something that it, I don't know, I think we feel it should be automatic for the missionaries to, they would do talk about it with, with folks that are their friends, they're investigating. Um, but if we can be proactive in reaching out to the missionaries and say, who are you working with? How can we help? Can we come? Can we yeah, help get them thinking about it? And you see that the whole purpose of the leader, strong word leading out there for him is to lead and coordinate. Yeah. So that's the main role that he would have. Once again, if the Temple of Family History Leader is not called, a member of the Elders Forum Presidency fills that role. So it's important to note that because we have both situations in the stake. Some wards do have a Temple of Family History Leader. Some ward, the Elders Forum Presidency Councillor acts as a Temple of Family History Leader because there wasn't, isn't one called in their unit. So the in section 25.2.2, .2, Elders Forum and Relief Society Presidencies. So the Elders Quorum President and Relief Society President each assign a presidency member to help lead Temple and Family History work in the ward. These two presidency members work together. And their responsibility is to attend ward Temple and Family History coordination meetings. To encourage individuals and families to learn the doctrines and blessings of Temple and Family History work. To ensure that the doctrine and blessings of Temple and Family History work are taught at church. To encourage members to learn about their ancestors and perform temple ordinances on their behalf. And to ensure that Temple and Family History work is planned and reported in ward council meetings and in ward Temple and Family History coordination meetings. It really stood up to us, that stood up to us as we read these about the keywords here, um, and they are to encourage and ensure. So it's not that the Elders Quorum Relief Society Presidency members are to do the work, they're to encourage ward members and encourage that the doctrine and temple and blessings are taught in church. So in meetings for all of our organizations, as well as in sacrament meetings, just to make sure that, that everything is being taught um, and to encourage members to do their, do yeah. their work. Yeah, so each understands each other's role. Yeah. So that leads us on to the War Temple and Family History Coordination Meetings, which is something that just, not just throughout, our state, just throughout the church generally, people are still trying to, come to understand what this is and what this really is um but the coordination meeting is something that we really would like to talk about a little bit so they don't have to be a formal meeting meeting they can be brief informal um or tell the family history coordination meetings are held to be held regularly so who should attend this would be interesting who we bring from the pages before so the word template family history leader who conducts these meetings Assigned members of the Relief Society and Elders Forum Presidency. Temple and Family History Consultants. And this one a lot of people don't do, an assistant in the Priests Quorum. And a presidency member of the Oldest Young Women class. So that's what makes up the coordination meeting. Those are the people who should be there. Yep. So continuing on with the, the meetings, the purpose of the meetings are to coordinate efforts to implement the Ward Temple and Family History Plan plan how to help specific ward members with their temple and family history work as requested that's kind of it that's it's kind yeah. of a simple sort of thing but the important thing with this is to 
a lot of people are feeling some pressure with these meetings. And so these last two points are really important. These meetings may be held in person or remotely. And as we mentioned at the top, coordination can also happen in other ways, including phone calls, texts, and emails. It doesn't have to be a meeting. I think we've mentioned this before is, was it, Elder oh, right. Renlin says it takes a darn good meeting to be no meeting at all. <laughs> but the point is that you're coordinating. So you can do that on a phone call. You could do it in a group text. You could do it in an email. Um, yep. So just to consider those things. And then also there are stake Temple Family History Consultants, which we have some here as well. Um, they serve under the direction of the stake presidency or one or more high counselors assigned to Temple and Family History work. Most stakes do have one high counselor who normally that is for us, Brother Murdoch. So he would work with our state consultants. Yep. Sorry. Support high counselors and the state relief society presidency in their efforts to instruct others in Temple of Family History work. I like the clear clarification that is under the state consultant section now. Um, it just really it kind of fine tunes the role. Yeah, that's one thing we have seen with the handbook changes is it definitely is fine tuning everybody's role. Yeah. Help teach and support members in Ward Temple and Family History Callings. Help coordinate stake indexing efforts. And serve in family history centers. So that's kind of the summary on the, the handbook things. If you have any questions, make a note of them. We can answer them at the end if there's anything that's confusing. But we would encourage you to, to go online, you know, find the handbook. It's right there and you can just do a little search if you can't, you know, on the church webpage. Um, but it's just a really helpful resource just to know what your role is.